Hi again. So we're still talking about constructive program and we're still talking about uh, Charka. And I make the point on page 172 that Charka only appeared non-confrontational. And uh, I'm not sure I'm proud of this particular phrase, but I said it was really going for the colonial jugular. Uh, the colonial system depended on financial exploitation. And this is where the Indians were saying we won't have any of that. Uh, but of course, it was not directed against the, Indi against the English uh, personally. I have a quote here from Toynbee that I like very much. Arnold Toynbee, the British historian, who uh, said so well about Gandhi, he made it impossible for us to go on ruling India, but at the same time, he made it possible for us to abdicate without rancor and without dishonor. This is critically important. I think it is the role of the nonviolent actor to give the opponent a graceful, dignified way out. That in a way, if you will, that's the emotional constructive program. Uh, so if we're forcing somebody out of we're saying we, we won't take this from you, we're also giving, saying that this is impinging on your dignity to do this to us. As you remember, in the Philippines, they called nonviolence a lie all to offer dignity. And uh, a classic example of this difference between the thing and the person comes up at the end of the uh, Charka episode on the next page where I talk about Gandhi's visit to the Lancashire Mills. First of all, it was very typical of Gandhi, classic thing, they said, don't go to Lancashire, the workers whom you have put out of work by boycotting British goods are very angry with you. Uh, my immediate reaction would have been, yeah, thanks for the warning, uh, but that wasn't what he was like. On one occasion, somebody said, don't go to a particular village. The head man has, offered, has uh, vowed that he would actually kill you on sight. Gandhi said, where is it? Let's go went right to the guy's house, knocked on the door, the man opened it. You can imagine how startled he was. And Gandhi said to him, uh, I'm here to help you fulfill your vow. So the person actually started to strangle Gandhi in front of all these horrified people. And within less than a minute, he had stopped and he fell at Gandhi's feet and said, this whole village is yours to command. So that's a very, very dramatic one-on-one -on -one episode. But here we have him going to the Lancashire workers and patiently explaining to them why he was doing what he was doing, what kind of starvation they had in India, which you did not have in Britain, even when you're out of work. And he went on to say, you must understand that we're both victims. We're both victims of an exploitive system. You've been roped into it in one way and it was delivered to us in another way. And so you have this famous photograph of Gandhi with these women in the Lancashire mills. I, I call it the Ip Ip Orai photograph because they've got their arm around him and they're so happy uh, with him and what he said. And there was a, one of the workers who said, may I say or need I say that I, as a Lancashire cotton working man who is to some extent suffering through the action of the Indian Congress leaders, have a profound admiration for Mr. Gandhi and a great many of my fellow workers share that spirit. This, this is a wonderful <clears throat> little pastiche in which we can see the incredible power of nonviolence to convert the opponent. It's like a concrete example of what Toynbee talked about. Well, on that note, uh, what I'd like to go on to talk about <clears throat> Next is uh, a, one of the simple concepts that Gandhi developed in the course of uh, building his constructor program, which is heart unity. Before I do that, though, I want to touch just one more moment on the fact that Charka appeared non-confrontational, but actually was confrontational. Uh, later on, after writing Search for Nonviolent Future, we came up with a, a term for this. This is a stealth operation, and you like to have those in nonviolence. The most famous one, perhaps, was the SALT Satyagraha, 
where the British Viceroy literally cabled to London saying, at the moment, I'm not losing any sleep over the SALT campaign. But in fact, little did he know, he was actually losing the whole empire. So next time we will talk about uh, heart unity. And uh, till then, let's be thinking about what would be the charka for us. Thanks very much.